Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely wonderful day. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. In news that I think was supposed to have been scarier news, this was also quite spoken about all over the place. Coinbase, yep, that Coinbase has recently announced that they are going to be suspending 80, that is 80, non-US dollar trading pairs in a bid to boost liquidity on their platform. You may or may not have seen it. I mean, it depends on like how deep you actually are. Into the cryptocurrency space, the last like three months, there are a number of mainstream publications who have made sure uh, to announce that cryptocurrency trading platforms, exchanges, have lower trading volume than usual. This isn't exactly news, um, it's because, you know, as the crypto market goes down, there's going to be less interest. When you have less interest, there's less money. Less money means less trading volumes, and this is why prices usually tend to go down. However, for the mainstream appeal, what have you, it ties into the narrative of like, well, crypto's not doing well, Bitcoin's not going up. You were, you were here, most of you, over the course of the last two years. Uh, I think many people in the crypto space, it just seems like complete logic that if prices are going down or expected to go down, of course, trading volume is not going to be there. Uh, Coinbase over the course of this year has done, has had a number of initiatives to try and boost their numbers and to try and get people to go back to their platform. I've mentioned thousands of times, there are tons of other crypto exchanges. There are other crypto exchanges that offer uh, lower fees. Coinbase has a number of... Uh, uh, services available on their platform and the fee, the FEE, -E, that they charge for it is around 25%. You heard that correctly, 25%. The issue is, is that Binance and Kraken and Gemini offer the same things when they, with a 1% fee. So, of course, we had earlier this year, Coinbase announced that they made their own chain called Base because they were trying to copy off of Binance, who has the Binance Smart Chain, and tons of people are building on top of the Binance Smart Chain. So, of course, in an extra bid to get extra revenue, you create your own chain, you put it on top of Ethereum, and you're like, oh, hey, look, decentralization, look what we did, everyone. Bring all your money over here. They announced the same way that Binance did, I think, the end of last year. Coinbase said this year that they would stop, uh, wink, they would not be supporting as many stable coins on their platform uh, to increase liquidity with, within the Coinbase ecosystem. They really were just trying to shift more people to the USDC coin, which is the circle coin that Coinbase also uses as their main stable coin in their platform. So everything has basically been a bid to get more people to use the Coinbase platform, to give Coinbase more money, because there was a period years ago where Coinbase was the head honcho of the cryptocurrency space. They're not so much anymore, and, and it's not like they're not like, you know, under the mud. They're not doing terribly, but everything that they're trying to do is to kind of boost up the Coinbase sphere, if you will. So there, when you are... Coinbase and you are trying to mimic Binance, Binance being the crypto exchange that adds every single coin on the planet, no matter what the coin actually is, <clears throat> Coinbase has also tried to do something similar and basically adding tons of coins onto their platform at the exact same time. The issue is, is that if Bitcoin and Ethereum have lower transaction volume and not as many people are using it as they were using it in 2021, of course, a multitude of the coins that many of you should not have had in your portfolio in the first place are also going to be not doing as well when it comes to like actual liquidity and or people using them. These coins tend to flourish in hype cycles or when Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP and Cardano are pumping their way to heaven. So usually... We see a resurgence of these coins, but it's a really weird thing where uh, we know that 
after a bull run comes a bear run for for quite a while. But this is usually when the exchanges begin to add extra coins onto their platform, knowing that less people are going to be using them. What have you. In a press release, uh, Coinbase disclosed plans to delist the pairs, including assets with market leaders, Bitcoin, Tether, and the Euro, citing efforts to improve market health and liquidity. So they're not delisting Bitcoin or Tether or Euro pairings. They're simply the coins that are linked to these things are going to be suspended from the platform, as it were. Typically, I mean, years ago, at least, when, when crypto was still relatively new, if you if your coin had a trading pair to Bitcoin, you know, you you basically made it. That was like, you know, c- kind of the end all. A lot of times uh, Coinbase would link altcoins, not even to Ether. It was to these other obscure coins that no one cared about. And I was like, if you want these coins to survive, you link them to Bitcoin. But now as we have over 10,000 different coins out there, even linking it to Bitcoin isn't enough because we're at the point in the cryptocurrency, you know, history books, your coin needs to do something. You need partnerships. There's another coin, I won't mention it. It's a very popular coin, uh, or at least was a year ago. Uh, One of the developers continues to post on Twitter nearly every day, nearly every day talking about the new updates, the new things that are coming, the new partnerships. You won't believe what's happening. Over and over, and nothing has taken place. No partnerships, no updates, no upgrades, no layer twos, nada. So yeah, your coin has to do something at this point. Your coin needs to be actually used by governments and banks and institutions if it has any hope of making it to the end of this decade. The company stated that the decision follows previous efforts to monitor markets, hence a suspension on the exchange, advanced trade, and on Coinbase Prime as well. They said, as previously announced, we have suspended trading on a number of non-USD markets across Coinbase Exchange, advanced trade. That's exactly what I just read over there. Here's the actual thing on their website right here. There's far... Far too many coins to even think of reading any of... I mean, I don't know what ACH is. Is is a coin called ACH, EGLD, uh, APRA, Badger, BAND, what's BNT, EARN, FORTH, IOX, IDEX, RAD, REC, Right, yeah. Oh, Sushi also has some delistings to the to the Bitcoin, Euro, Ether, uh, Great British Pound as well. So, you know, just once again, coins that you probably should not have had in your um in your car in the first place. But I know that a lot of people tend to uh, want altcoins that they think will have a 90x because someone else on YouTube told them. These these coins are garbage. They have no usage. They're not being used. And you will never in your point and your life at any point be walking into a store and asking them if they take Badger or Arprafra or Knickerbrugger. Anyway... That's the um, Coinbase uh, delisting. I don't know. Remove. I mean, you can kind of call it a delisting. It's like they're removing 80 pairs. If, if your coin gets unpaired from Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Tether, and the Euro, and the Great British Pound, you've basically been delisted. That's the Coinbase news. And yeah. Let's move on. In news that lightly confused me, and I and I want to know if I'm if I'm the only one in this in this boat. There's a photo of someone holding a Bitcoin with a strike of lightning. Amazing. Antoine Riard, that is R I A R D R I A R D. Right, right. Okay, a security researcher and developer has recently announced his departure. From the Lightning Network's development team, you should all know what Lightning is. It's the Layer 2 solution for Bitcoin. It was invented, created, talked about in 2015, 16, 17. It's supposed to be 
the thing that gets us to 1 million transactions per second. We had Lightning Network news two weeks ago, somewhere around there, uh, that I, I think it, it grew by, I think, 2,000% in the last two years because companies behind the scenes are beginning to accept it and use it. I think Coinbase and Binance also both announced that they're going to be supporting it. Basically, for instantaneous transactions that you know cost one-tenth of a cent, everyone loves Lightning. It's absolutely amazing. However, Antoine Riard, the security developer, has cited security issues and challenges that he says pose a threat to the Bitcoin ecosystem and therefore he has left the Lightning Network development team. Now, when this news released, I saw the headline and I was like, Oh, awesome. Someone found a security concern and they're going to fix it. Because in 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 the normal cryptocurrency world, I don't care what coin you have. If you've been here, I say for the last six or seven years, you're quite familiar with news of there's a problem with the Ethereum testnet. Oh, snaps. Two days later, the developers fixed it. There appears to be a problem with Cardano. There's something wrong with the whatever. Okay, two days later, the security team and other developers simply found it. It's very rare, if ever, that we get news that someone has allegedly found a problem somewhere. And then they simply leave the team, the you know, the developer space, and then kind of like make it into this like big thing. So... All chains, nothing is perfect. They are created and updated by humans. None of us are perfect. And therefore, we can assume that there are going to be some bumps along the road. Instead of announcing that there is a problem, as many developers do on GitHub or other places, hey, we need the community support right now so we can fix this thing. This person apparently kind of jumped onto like a, a soap box, a cardboard box. He jumped onto something and basically said out loud that there's a problem. And because of the problem, he's leaving. As opposed to being like, oh, there's a problem, let me fix it. This seems more like an attention-grabbing kind of scenario. Like I said, maybe it's just me. But having been in this space for a while, all chains have problems. All things have issues. And they usually get fixed by the developers. We never hear of someone announcing there's a problem and doing this really weird, like, picking up their coat, leaving out the door and slamming it as they leave kind of thing. It's, it's a bit dramatic for, for, no, for no reason. This, of course, ended up making it into really big news because there are a lot of people who, for whatever reason, don't like lightning or find negative news about Bitcoin to be, you know, their thing. In a discussion on the Linux Foundation's public mailing list, Riard expressed concerns about a new class of replacement cycling attacks which have put the Lightning Network in a dangerous position. The Lightning Network is a second layer solution built on top of Bitcoin, yada, yada, and it was off-chain transactions. However, the replacement cycling attack specifically targets these payment channels, exploiting inconsistencies between individual mempools to steal funds from participants. And here's, the, here's a tweet for it right here, and then they drew a bunch of boxes with letters inside of them as if normal people are supposed to understand what these people are actually talking about um very popular unpopular spoken about news uh this was eh, it's big news yes but once again like this is more dramatic than it actually has to be like we've had a lot of times where developers uh do and i don't you want to use the word ethical here but if they find a problem and they deal with it with, between them and their team, and then they announce after the fact that they actually patched up something. Because when you throw out negative news into the air, a lot of people don't read articles or go over them. I have no idea what they're about. So they tend to panic. They screenshot something, send it to their friend. Their friend also panics. It spreads like wildfire. People begin to sell because they think that the Lightning Network is Bitcoin or Bitcoin for some reason is in some kind of trouble. This was a major problem a number of years ago. Uh, with Mt. Gox, where people assumed that Mt. Gox was Bitcoin. I know it sounds nonsensical now, but that's the world that we lived in and still kind of slightly live in. It's the same exact thing with FTX. Remember reason? Remember the whole sell-off, the, the crazy, the crazy selling. That was because a lot of the 
news articles out there was that there was something wrong with the Bitcoin space, the cryptocurrency markets going under because this thing that was attached to Bitcoin, you kind of get it. So yes, it appears that the Lightning Network has a problem. I would assume, I don't think anyone out there assumed that the Lightning Network was perfect. Like, I can accurately say there was probably not one person on this planet who was like, oh, the Lightning Network's great. It's absolutely perfect. Everything has a problem. Everything has a an issue. But uh, this person made headline news because they jumped up and scared everyone. Uh, cool. So I, I, I give it I give it four weeks maximum. Whatever this issue was, there's going to be another news article that someone fixed it. And then a day later, people will have forgotten about it. This guy will have left the Lightning Network. And yeah, I don't assume he's going to be rehired because, you know, that's not how things actually work. That's the, whoa, Lightning Network, what's going on, news? And yeah. Let's move on. Also in popular news, Binance has completed their 25th, that is insane, 25th quarterly burn setting a new milestone in terms of the amount of Binance coin that they have destroyed in the past two years. Binance coin used to be, used to be uh, referenced as like the potential future Amazon. That was like two or three years ago. You can find weird articles about it. There were a lot of like publications who were talking about Amazon stock and buying it in the early days. And they kind of said it was the same exact thing with Binance because of how big Binance is. The other part of that is, is that instead of having stock, Binance has Binance coin. There were originally 200 million coins. They announced, I think almost after the creation of it, that they would be burning Binance coin every three months. Three months. Yeah, that sounds about right. Every three months. And it always ends up making the news because they end up burning... Uh, 200,000 Binance coin, uh, 324,000 Binance coin at one time. The idea being that the coin, the idea being that the coin will only gain in popularity and become more expensive as more coin burns uh, continue to happen. This is why usually a lot of times if we've ever had any negative news weeks and prices have been going down, You'll see that Binance coin is still up by 4 to 5 to 6 to 7%. And you're like, why is the coin going up? It's because they just had a coin burn and tons of coins were destroyed and therefore, you know, magic. So they just completed their 25th one. However, it, this is apparently a large amount of Binance coin and this is why it ended up making the news. Binance announced on Monday the completion of their 25th quarterly BNB burn. Through its auto burn program, they destroyed... Half a billion dollars, that is billion with a B, half a billion dollars worth of Binance coin. So normally we get like a couple hundred thousand, what have you, kind of coins that end up being destroyed. This one was 2.139 million Binance coin were obliterated in an instant. The figure indicates that Binance lowered their total BNB supply by 1.38%. The highest figure recorded within the past 10 quarters. And here's a little photo that they have right here. It's like a Binance coin that has like fire, but it's not really fire. It's like a, an image of it. And it says BNB burned 2.139 million coins. The last time Binance burned more was during their 14th burn. Jeez Louise, where they burned and destroyed 3.6 million Binance coin token, the equivalent of 1.8% of the coin's supply. So, fan, fantastic, uh, wonderful, very popular news as well. I guess it's because, I don't know, it's Binance, I guess. The coins are being destroyed. We typically, typically, normally, don't get a lot of, like, Binance coin news. I never hear this coin, like, being popular and or being accumulated It's typically a multitude of other altcoins, but maybe institutions are buying up tons of Binance coin. I'm not really sure. I also don't remember. What what was the previous all-time high for Binance coin? Was it over 1,000? I feel like it was over 1,000. Was it 800? I don't remember. Anyway, cool. Wonderful. We will be getting this news again in the next couple of months because that's, that's how this works. And then at some point, we will get to the illustrious... 
uh, 100 million Binance coins, and then we'll see what happens to the price and to Binance and all these other amazing things that are out there. Wonderful. Fantastic. That's the BNB Binance news. Moving along. Also in um, fixed or clarified news. So there were a lot... The problem is, is that people don't read and people don't do their own research. Like this is a major issue, not only in life, but also in the cryptocurrency space and also in the financial world. At some point, someone started a rumor uh, similar to the exact same thing. The first rumor that we had two weeks ago that the SEC had approved the iShares Bitcoin ETF and Bitcoin's price moved up on the rumor. People start rumors like this all the time. But it usually depends on how like how how juicy the actual rumor is, and then it ends up spreading a little bit too quick, especially if no one is actually trying to fact check anything, and then you know we all get into trouble. Someone made a rumor that Roblox. It looks like Legos. I I don't I don't know what this is. There, there, there was some other video. This was like two or three years ago. There was some other thing that looked like this. Some other blocky face people, everyone's head was a square and they didn't have a normal face. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And then somebody in the comment section was like, TMI, how do you not know? He's lying. And I was like, I don't know what, I don't know everything. I'm not on the internet all the time. Like, do you know what this is? What's a, what's a, what's a Roblox? Like, what is that? I know it's not Roblox because that sounds kind of ridiculous. I, so I would assume it's like blocks. Like, but am I supposed to know what every single thing is that's on the internet? Anyway, someone started a rumor <clears throat> That the people from Roblox were going to be um, accepting cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. And then the news became, it's not just cryptocurrencies, it's XRP. And then everyone was like, oh my gosh, XRP. And then it spread like really, really fast. And this is, you know, this is, this is the news. On social media, false claims can spread like wildfire. Even after the source has been deleted, because who care who cares about information and sources, right? Roblox has denied that they will be supporting XRP payments, despite claims that spread widely, telling Decrypt, this crypto, this website, uh, that any suggestion that games gamers could buy Ro Robux, Robux, Rob, okay, to pay for in-game items with XRP's token is inaccurate. The rumors began swirling late Monday when payments processor BitPay tweeted that users could begin using XRP for Xola. It's the, the, the letter X and S-O-L-L-A, Xola, Zola, Sala, payments in supported games, and tag the free-to-play game Roblox and Smite. Okay. They said, and I quote, Exola now accepts XRP with BitPay as a payment method for their games such as Smite and Roblox. BitPay wrote in a now deleted post, you can use your favorite cryptocurrency to buy, play, and enjoy games like never before. Then the tweet got deleted because someone, I don't know, I, I, I don't understand, I don't understand how people can get hired at any news publication. I don't care what it is. And no one checks sources. No one, everyone just simply throws something out there trying to hope that it ends up getting clicked. So basically the people came forward and they were like, no, this isn't actually true. And it took people a long time to process the idea that Roblox was not just accepting XRP. Now I'll tell you some truth here as someone who's been in the market for quite some time. The odds of just just XRP being chosen for anything is kind of slim to none. So there's a difference between a bank announcing that they're going to be using XRP and or the XRP ledger to run their central bank digital currency or to put their cat photos on or whatever people are doing on these blockchains. It's an entirely different thing if you as a company are announcing you're going to be supporting cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. Uh, you typically announce that you are going to be supporting Bitcoin, Ethereum, 
XRP, and in the olden days, it used to be uh, Litecoin, and there was another one that was always, sometimes usually Tether. So when I read that it was just XRP, I was like, okay, something is clearly amiss, and then everyone, for some reason, can continue to run with it. So I try to do what I can to demystify and debunk a bunch of things. We've gone over that over the years with a bunch of other coins that I like nearly explicitly told you not to buy because they were garbage and scams and but you know not everyone listens. So if something if anything sounds too good to be true, research it. Google around. I've mentioned that before. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of times a lot of stuff I say on this channel can sound a bit wacky. You know, because the cryptocurrency space is all over the place. If I say anything that sounds too crazy, Google it. Look around, find the source, and then go, okay, TMI is not completely insane. He's you know, simply going over the news because um, I feel like a lot of times people will see something. And of course, expectations are high. People want these coins to be adopted. But I think a lot of times people see news and they know that they can spread it really quick to try and boost the coin's price. The issue is that that only does harm in the in the long run. If these things, if, if a coin is associated with like partnerships that not actually are, that was the problem with Cardano and Tron a number of years ago. They kept on saying they had these partnerships. They didn't have a lot of partnerships. And Tron is now completely gone, regardless of how many people uh, keep keep trying desperately to put Justin Sun in, in the news Cardano is still on like okay footing, but no one uses Tron. No one's building on Tron. No one wants Tron. It, it sounds ridiculous even to say that word out loud. It is not going to be a, a popular thing at all in the future. Just trying to make sure you, uh, you're all paying attention. So yeah, I um, sincerely do hope that you have once again enjoyed this very weird video. A lot of weird cryptocurrency news as of late. A lot of it is kind of, I, I, I think the market hasn't, you know, found its groove like Stella. Because I think between the anticipation of price movements and uh, interest rates and the having and utility for a lot of coins and partnerships and announcements, it feels, at least from my end, it feels like a lot of the news is kind of like pushed through a very tiny window in, in, in a sort of way. Uh, and, like, and, and, and the news that I bring you is like, and I say this lightly, like relevant to your portfolios and to the actual space. The other 95% of news, I'll make it, if, if, if all of you tell me one day that you want to see like a nonsense video, I'll show you, I'll show you the news that's actually out there because it's like, oh, someone, someone wrote this, like this was an article that someone thought that needed to be a thing. Like, like, a, a, like the whole like Vitalik Buterin sending money thing. There was something a couple weeks ago where someone wrote that Justin Sun Oh gosh, what was it? Did he buy a house? He moved money somewhere, but the photo of him, he he looked like a like a king or something and I was like, "Really? Like that's the that's the thing you wrote? There's stuff about some of these protocols like some websites they they have really Oh my gosh, it's so cringe. Some of these websites will have um like titles and it's like Bitcoin just moved up by $1500, but can Bitcoin X42930 do the exact same thing? Will it also? And I'm like, did you just make up a coin that you threw into the article? Like it's just eh, anyway. So so no. At at the memento, uh, Roblox is not going to be using cryptocurrencies. I assume they will in the future. Just you know, hold on to your horses if you will. Um, right. I do hope that you have all enjoyed. Uh, I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon. Evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be, I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.